Welcome back to module 12. This is going to be exercise number two, where we'll be creating a user model listener. In this exercise, we're going to create a listener that sends a notification email on any user model update. This exercise highlights one of the many different events we are able to listen to when an action on a model entity is executed on the persistence layer. There are lots of use cases for model listeners, like auditing, cache clearing, and validation. In this exercise, we'll demonstrate using model listeners for security alerting. Whenever a user entity is updated, we'll send an email alert. As a quick overview, the first thing we'll do is create a Liferay module project using the API template. Next, we'll create the model listener component, we'll declare our dependencies, we'll implement the listener component, and then we'll do a final code review. After that, we'll go ahead and deploy that to Liferay and test it out. Moving over to our Liferay developer studio, the first thing we want to do is create a new Liferay module project using the developer wizard. So we'll right click, select new, and select Liferay module project. And we'll give that a project name of user post update model listener. We can keep the default location for now, and we'll keep the build type as Gradle and the Liferay version as 7.2. What we are going to change is this project template name, which should be service. We'll go ahead and select next once this is all filled out. The next step will be filling out the component class name, which will give a name of user post update model listener. And we'll give that a package name of com dot dot training dot model dot listener for the service name we'll just fill out com dot dot portal dot kernel dot model dot model listener and then we'll select finish to close out this wizard once that project is created for us we want to declare some of our dependencies so we'll open up that project on the build.gradle file and we'll give that a dependency here. We'll type in compile only group. This is going to be javax.mail and the name is going to be mail. We'll hit save. And we'll close out our build.gradle file. Next, we want to extend the base model listener. Our generated class declaration implements the model listener interface. So we'll go ahead and open that up so we can take a look at it. Implementing that directly would require a lot of boilerplate code in this class. We'll go ahead and change the class declaration so that it extends the base model listener instead. That way, we only need to implement the methods that we need. So once that's open, we can go ahead and change the class declaration as follows. We'll change this to extends, and we want to extend the base model listener of user. Once that's done, we can go ahead and import base model listener and import user as well. Now we want to override the on after update method. So first things first, we want to add a reference to private mail service, we'll call that mail service. Make sure to import the reference annotation. And then we're going to override the on after update method. Just to move things along a little bit faster, what we can do here is copy the snippet that was provided in your exercise folder. We'll just paste that in and then make sure that all of our imports that are missing are imported. And we'll hit save on that. Okay, if your code looks good, let's go ahead and build this project. So we'll go to our Gradle tasks, under modules, under user post update, and then we'll go ahead and build that project. And once that's built, We'll go ahead and deploy that to our Liferay bundle. So we'll go into our modules folder 
under user post update model listener, under build, and inside of libs. And we'll take that jar that was just created, and we'll go ahead and deploy that to our library bundle. We'll paste that in, and we'll see it quickly disappear. And then we can go to our console, and we'll watch to make sure that it's both processing and that it deploys correctly. Here we can see that that project has deployed correctly. Our next step is to test and verify. So we'll go ahead and open that up and we'll navigate to localhost 8080. And we'll go ahead and sign in. We'll sign in with our test user. And we'll go to control panel under users and then users and organizations. We can open any account for editing. So we'll go ahead and open up our test test user and we can make any changes that we want to. In this case, we'll give him a middle name, which is also test. We'll go ahead and click save. And we'll notice that the request has completed successfully. And if we open up our fake SMTP server, we'll notice that we now have a successful email. And that's it. Now we verified that our code is working and we can move on.